Disclaimer, this video contains Ains clips and scenes Ains from other properties. I do not own these, these clips. This is simply just to help out with the video better. Uh, with this in mind, copyright act 1976. I do not own these things. Ains and all and all all clips, ips and scenes, Ains belong to the rightful and respectful owners. Thank you, and please enjoy the video. What's up, people of YouTube? F my critic once again. And today, I do a very special review. I heard that today and yesterday was a very special day on the night. Because apparently, there's something called a blue moon or a super moon. And that got me thinking, blue moon, huh? Wasn't that the thing that happened in the Smurfs movie? Therefore... This is why this video exists. I gotta tell you guys, it, I feel relieved it, it, reviewing this these movies. I loved the Smurfs when I was a kid. Like, I generally adored the Smurfs. Or, mostly the live action ones. I mean, what do you expect? I was young and I'd watch anything. But these guys, these guys, I, all I'm saying is I was obsessed with these guys. I was collecting all the toys Always, uh, is basically watching everything that had something to do with the Smurfs. All I'm saying is, is this movie, these movies just hold a vesh, uh, hold a candle for me because these movies are really awesome. Um, sure, a lot of people, people don't like these movies because it kind of separates on the, uh, on the uh, source material because the Smurfs kind of go to New York and you know it's basically doing the whole thing of saying it's bad to be a corporate. Entity while at the same time being a corporate entity, but I was young and wa watch anything what Was the first two well technically I'm not reviewing just the first two movies He's I'm also going to be reviewing When the lost village thing basically it's clearly the reason why we have a smurfs anime a 3d animated reboot Anyway, uh, what are these three movies about all right? Well, the first movie is basically, you know, it says it takes place in a village of imagination with little tiny blue men. And apparently, Lee, it's a very special day for them. Um, apparently, Lee, you know, there's going to be a blue moon, just like tonight. And they're having a big celebration, but Clumsy Smith, Earth Voice, voiced by the sad, oddly late, eight, uh, late... Crap, I forgot his name. Oh, this is so embarrassing. And point is, he, he wasn't... Point is, he was a legend, and it was sad when he passed away. My favorite is role outside of Clumsy has got to be Jim Lake, Ake from Troll Hunters. There's rest in peace. And Anyway, and you see, he, what Gar... And you see Gargamel in this movie. Honestly, I feel like the casting for Gargamel was just perfect. Every cast asked was perfect. Even if some of them only just had like, oh, we got called in for one line. Like for example, RuPaul, all the the all only got voiced in to only do two lines, and so he can voice joke key. He, uh, well, in my opinion, I'm glad they got him in. And even though his, even though. Oh, he was only in it for like a few seconds. And rest in peace, Paul, Paul Roop. Did I say that right? I hope I did. It, anyway, Gar Argamel. You see, throughout the entire show, I always did have a strange feeling of his plans. Like, he always wanted to capture them and to get rid of them. He wanted to turn them into gold. He wanted to eat them. His plans of what, of what he wants to do with the Smurfs this is very unclear. Like, in this version, he wants to use the Smurfs' essence since to increase his magic, you know? Anyway, and then he discovers... Anyway, he discovers their land because of Clumsy. See, instead of, like, you know, obeying Papa Smurfs' rules, you know, he's like... He's like, I, you know, I'm going to disobey Papa Smurf, you know? Oh, and because of that, Gargamel finds them and he leads them to... Uh, a portal and when the blue moon happened they got sucked into to new york city and here's where in my opinion the movie gets a little bit dumb um because in this movie neil patrick harris his character he's always so depressed and he's always like 
stiff. He's like, he always wants to get out of this movie as quickly as possible. And how he is in the sequel is just, is just as worse. Honestly, I don't like Neil Patrick's Harris character in this movie. He, he's always so whiny. He's always so emotional. The only time he ever gets cool, or at least when he lightens up, is when he's playing Guitar Hero with the Smurfs. And when they start to rap. Hell, his entire character throughout this movie is trying to sort out his advertising thing while spreading the message it's wrong to be an advertisement corporation while also trying to get used to the fact he's going to be a dad soon. Yeah, when I think of the Smurfs movie, I think of, think of a dad ad who, who's try, who wants to become a dad, but he doesn't know if he's ready or not. Uh, yeah, it's, in my opinion, he kind of like, he's like this with the movie, you know? He's not my favorite character in the movie. Anyway, and, and there's, and there's this scene in the movie that bugged me as a kid, but still does to this day. A, they go to a library, and then they come across a book that has the Smurfs in them, referencing their creator or something like that. And so, wait, so is the Smurfs like Mark... Like, are the Smurfs a thing in their world? I mean, they Google them and everything, you know? Oh, and they, like... So, wait. So, wait. Hey, so, the person who wrote the book about the Smurfs was, like, a dimension or time-traveling. When uh, All I'm saying is, he it was kind of confusing for me. And all he did was wrote stories about the Smurfs uh, and published them and stuff. Made them marketable. So... It is my opinion. And there should have been a scene where their creator of the Smurfs was a time traveler or something. And then he makes the Smurfs, makes them marketable to spread the word about those magical cr blue creatures. As, and they're a profitable thing in the real world. But, like, you see, P Patrick's character and his wife, you know, they know who they are. are but they're all like, hey, we thought you were all make-believe. You know, we, we thought you were all make believe. So, you know, but then they realize he's they're actually real. Like, like the person who created the Smurfs was just a dimension hopper or a time traveler, and he just wrote stories about these magical creatures or something. At least it's better than at least it's better than just having a book about a guy who wrote the Smurfs and it doesn't have and you know it doesn't have any like continuity or like some form of telling us us about it. You know, he just there's a book. Look, that has the Smurfs in them, and that's what they use to make a poor little potion to create a blue moon so they can go home. Oh, and then you see Gargam, and you see Papa, he gets kidnapped because earlier in the movie, he had a vision where a clumsy was going to fuck it all up and get, get these guys captured. Er, and, like, he sacrificed himself, even though he had an opportunity to escape with them. Um, and, you know, there's a net... There's an epic fight, and honestly, in my opinion, this is the highlight for the movie for me. I went home and got a few friends. I don't know what, but I really like it. I like it how all the Smurfs come together and they're all like, la, 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 You know, it, I just found it very cool and very badass in my opinion. And, and, you know, an epic fight. And then Papa's all like, a vision is never wrong, even though when it is wrong. Like, seriously, throughout the entire movie, Papa's word that this vision that he predicted will come true. And, like, does it, like... So what was the whole point of creating that vision, right? Like, what was the whole point of that vision if it wasn't going to come true, you know? What if, like, you know, I, I don't know. The point is, is it's kind of weird to me. This movie's a little confusing to me, even though I still love it. I still love it, even though it is kind of confusing to me. It's like, it's, you know, a Smurfs movie. Anyway, that was Smurfs 1, and his... I mean, it's got some parts I like, and it's got some parts that I don't like. Like, like Neil Patrick Harris's character, 
or the whole thing about the Smurfs as being a book in, in New York and like, uh, and the whole vision thing. These are the things that, I, in my opinion, holds the movie back, you know? Oh, it's just really, really strange Inch to me. Maybe you get it, but to me, I don't get it. it. But I still love this movie. I'd still watch it, show it to my kids. It's, if I had any. And, you know, I, I just, I just would, and I still, it's still classic to me. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. It's still a good movie, although it does have its problems. Um, and now the second one, Smurfs 2. Now, in my opinion, this is where the see the movie kind of picks up a little bit, and honestly, I kind of like it more than the first. Actually, like it introduces some new characters who are technically Smurfette siblings, Vexy and Haggis. Yes, well, in my opinion, I kind of would love to know how they were created. I mean, Gargamel said that's the same way how how Smurfette was created, it, but still, in my opinion, I kind of wish we got to a little. Got to know a little bit more about these characters because, in my opinion, I feel like these characters steal the show. They're really funny, and uh, and it's just all in all a pretty good movie. There was even going to be a Smurfs free, but like Ninja Turtles out of the shadow, it didn't make its money, and so therefore they canceled it. God damn it! Uh, anyway, uh, in this movie, you know, it's Smurfette's birthday. She, you know, she's worried that. You know, one day she might turn back to being evil. Well, but, you know, as long as she's with her family, you know. And and you see, the entire Smurfs were trying to throw her a surprise birthday party. But, you know, they all think they all forgot. And in my opinion, it's kind of douchey of the Smurfs. Like, like they know how hard her birthday is. So why the hell would they, you know, act like, you know, they don't care. And like, hey, hey, who cares if it's your birthday? We don't know. It's only there's a party. We're not going to do a party. And then, like, last minute, they're like, hey, surprise party. We're all kidding. And even though this day is very hard for you, we were just playing. Yeah, in my opinion, it was kind of douchey of the Smurfs. This. And in this movie, like I said, Neil Patrick Harris just pisses me off in this movie. In this movie, his his uh, stepdad ad comes, and I really like this guy. Like, I like the character... The actor who plays him. And I just like his character in general. But Patrice's character is just unbelievable in this movie. Okay, first of all, he has his kid. They named him Blue. Weird name, but whatever. And, you know, throughout the entire movie, he's always bitching and moaning about how his stepdad's a monster. How he's, you know, basically giving his, his grandchild gifts and being friendly to everything. Everyone. And, you know, just being a good person like honestly this is the kind of granddad like like he's like the most charming most nice most kindest grandparent that anyone would have wanted and he's complaining about him saying like he's a big claw that just follows you around and, and, and why because he got rid of your pet bird I, I get it your dad i get it your your parrot was the last thing your dad had gave you before he pissed off off but Still, you had to look at it. You were allergic to the bird. They got rid of it to help you. And you blame the whole thing on your stepdad. That's just such a douchey move, that is. He's always complaining, saying, Oh, God, he's so awful. Even though he's given my son so many gifts and giving him a party crown and all that. At I mean, the only douchey thing he does in this movie is accidentally like, give a peanut product to a... To someone who's allergic to peanuts. Oops. Oops sorry about that. Uh, that was my aunt. And this is my mum's iPad. Uh, never mind. And he's always like... He's always like... Even though he's like the nicest grandpa anyone would have asked for. for I freaking like this guy. And he's... And sure, the way how he meets the Smurfs is freaking hilarious. <laughs> And even when he finds out there, there's Murphs instead of blue aliens trying to steal their faces, 
<laughs> I mean, I give this guy an award. I just freaking like this guy. <laughs> I just all I'm saying is, is even when he finds out they're good, you know, he's he's down to help. He's he's down to like get Smurfette back at because. You see, Gargamel opened up a portal because he's living in the human world now, or the present, or whatever this is supposed to be. Like, are the are the Smurfs from a different world? Are they from a different time period? It's never really made clear. And, you know, Smurfette gets kidnapped because Gargamel opened up a portal that would only fit one of the, the knockoff Smurfs. He chooses Vexy, she kidnaps her, and all I'm saying is... Uh, is he, you know, he's down to help them out. And they go to Paris because that's where Gargamel was. And, and you know, oh, and Gargamel throughout the entire movie, like, he tries to make her feel better. And Smurfette, she was like, she freaking hates Gargamel. And then suddenly out of nowhere, she suddenly trusts him because he was giving her a cake and a present and a magic wand. And, I mean, I guess, I guess according to the Smurfs, I guess the Smurfs might believe that a person can change, so... Anyway, and this time, Gargamel wants to, like, use the Smurf's essence to rule the world. And in my opinion, it was basically the same plan from the last movie. Only difference is he didn't mention ruling the world. world. Anyway, anyway, Smurfette gets along with her bro and sis, and there's a freaking scene in the movie where these two die. I mean, they don't die, they come back, but it was kind of like, as a kid, it was kind of a little disturbing for me. These two characters that I was kind of growing fond with suddenly just pass away because they need to uh be fed smurf essence in order to live if i see that being a problem with smurf fat and also i want to say this why are they gray like why are they gray even though in the cartoon and in the 2017 inversion of the smurfs smurf fat before she became good she already had blue skin so was that like makeup or something like seriously it's never really made clear Anyway, and you see, uh, and it has a beautiful, gorgeous fight where, where Patrick and his stepdad actually make up, and they actually stop Gargamel, L, and Vexy and Haggis become blue, and they manage to uh go back, back to Smur, or uh, they go back to their timeline or dimension again. It's never really made clear. Or uh, and you know a catchy song at the end of the movie. I think I think Grouchy and Vexy might be a dating. I'm not sure. And that was Smurfs 2. Now, in my opinion, it's stronger than the first one. Like, don't get me wrong. I freaking hate Neil Patrick's character in this movie. He's always complaining about his stepdad. And it's nice when they actually make up and stuff. Uff, you know? But throughout the entire movie, he's always complaining, you know? Saying now he's the worst person ever. Or, oh, please. He's even though he's like the nicest guy ever, you know. Oh, but I do like the part with the Smurfs of how it, how it takes the whole, oh, you know, Smurfette, you know, embracing her old, her old side, how she used to be for a bit. You know, I did like that idea for a little bit, and I love the new characters, Fexy and Haggis. Although I do kind of wish we got to see a scene where how Gargamel created them, and um, and. All I'm saying is, this movie was pretty good. Shame I didn't get a Smurfs free. I would have loved that. But, and, I mean, the closest thing we have to a Smurfs free is these holiday specials, but, yeah, they don't really count. Uh, and back in 2016, and they rebooted the series again, but mostly just to make a TV show oh, called Smurfs The Lost Village. In it, the Smurfs, Earth with only this time, I'm brainy, hefty and clumsy you know joined together for to find a group of of female smurfs apparently Lee apparently smurfs are not just male they're also female but you see they live in different, different villages and sides yeah I kind of find that a bit weird actually like like they actually like uh, they may like there's two Ooh, Smurfs, boys and girls, right? And so why are they separate? Shouldn't they be together? But as a little society, I kind of like it best that they kind of that the girls kind of live with the boys always now in the uh, TV show. Well, I'm not gonna lie, right, but I kind of wish to know how how the boys got separated from the girls and how they all, you know, I kind of wish we got a little history on behind that. 
Anyway, this one, like the second movie, it tackles the whole Smurf fat, like, who is she? You know, she's got to be more than just what does an et mean, you know? Smurf and et. She's trying to figure out herself, you know what I mean? And, and you know, throughout the entire movie, you know, she, you know, she tried to find these pair of eyes that she believes are another, another pair of Smurfs. Anyway, but they're, you know, being harassed by Gargamel. Ellen, you know, Gargamel does the same thing he did in the previous two movies. Use the Smurf's essence to make him more powerful. Well, you know, I kind of like that plan, actually. It's a lot better than turning them into gold or eating them. I'm not going to lie. Oh, right. we even get a female Papa Smurf. It's pretty cool, actually. And I'm not going to lie. The ending to this movie is so corny. Like, there's a scene where... Where Smurfette absorbs Gargamel's power, but you see the energy turns her back to what she was, a lump of clay. And then, you know, Smurfs, they go, they huddle up, hold hands, but apparently the magic of Smurf love, I want to say, A, it turns her back into Smurfette once again. And and then there's an entire dance scene, because this is during the age where, where there has to be a dancing scene at the end of every animated movie. A, uh, so, yeah, that was Smurfs the Lost Village. Is it as good as the as the live-action ones? Eh, I'm mixed on it. Uh, but I do certainly say it was a good, good movie. Show it to your kids. Show it, uh, Watch it. Binge watch it if you like. Like, I don't know. It's, de it's decent enough. Well, I'd, give, I'd give the first movie 7 out of 10. Sequel, also 7 out of 10. And Lost Village, 7 out of 10. <laughs> And, oh, and there's something you don't know. The actor who played a brain in the Lost Village uh, is playing his greatest role until Il Dewey from DuckTales. Was, in my opinion, like the live-action ones, perfect casting. And, hell, even Clumsy is the same dude who voices Felix from Wreck-It Ralph. In my opinion, these Smurf movies are pretty good. I still love them. I still think they're decent to watch. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge Smurfs fan. And, oh, these guys are technically the reason I love the color blue. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, this review shout out goes to uh, the Smurfs original channel. You guessed it. You mostly get to watch Smurfs contents, mostly full episodes of of the old show, new show, clips of it. It whatever you want to watch, it's on there. I don't know if it has the live action movies on it though. Oh, whatever. It is the F Man Critic telling you to like, subscribe, hit notification. Have a happy blue moon. See you guys next time. Bye.